నమస్కారం అయిపే మై హార్ట్లీ రావరెన్స్ టు ఆల్ ద లిస్నర్స్ టుడే వీ వుడ్ డిస్కస్ ఆన్ చాప్టర్ టూ ఆఫ్ ద బైబుల్ to the old testament where god is explaining genesis now we would look over on this matter <coughs> so this uh, chapter 2 reads thus the heaven and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and god blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which god created and made here as i read god is saying that he has created all these things which is present in this world and that took seven days and after that he rested and this he is sanctifying it and saying that god had created all the things which is needed but as we know that uh, if previously there was nothing how the god has calculated the number of days because day and night can only be calculated with respect to something and when nothing was present how he calculated it? first thing second thing <coughs> god has created all this thing from his thing he has created it from nothing but from nothing nothing could be created out only from something something could be created out third thing is this work is created work is performed by the power so he has created energy or not before the creation of this world the energy is within this work or not energy is included in this world or not but as we know that energy is included in this world so if energy is included in this world and previously there was nothing how he how could he created 
the world because energy is invested in this world and if this world did not exist at that time that means energy also did not exist and if energy did not exist at that time how could he create or did he want to say us that uh, energy is a thing which is a part of god and if energy is the part of god then as we know all that from energy matter could be created and from matter energy could be created then how could we say that matter was not present matter was also present at that time if energy was present that means matter was present but energy and matter both were absent as bible is saying so all these things seem to be a clear ignorance if god is beyond world that must be beyond matter and energy then and there it could be called pure self or how could he be called pure self <clears throat> now the fourth thing is that god is saying that everything is created but we today we know that even today many things are created out it means the job is not finished creation is still in progress sanatan dharma says that creation is not a one time phenomenon creation in fact creation does not exist what exist is transformation of the existence so the transformation of the existence we notice in every moment every moment we notice the transformation is taking place this is what sanatan dharma is saying but here it is said that after seventh day creation has stopped but creation is still in progress and would always be in progress from time infinity to time infinity <coughs> sanatan dharma says that creation is not a writer this existence is always in progress this existence is always in action and reaction and something is transforming from something else fifth thing is that god has rested rested means tiredness tiredness means lack of energy lack of perseverance so here god is proved to be a personality or an entity which lacks energy which is not omnipotent 
otherwise how could it be possible that it uh, rested in this uh, world all we know that uh, nothing is in rest phase whatever it seems that it is in rest that uh, means that we are not uh, uh, subtly noticing its uh, kinetic state rest is just a relative thing rest to respect of something if there is a thing which is in rest then it could be called that it is in rest in respect with respect to something otherwise everything is in a dynamic state and with respect to something something is is in progress something is in even if it is in a rest phase to re, in relation with something it is in dynamic state in relation with other thing so rest and dynamism it is all together a relativistic state a relativistic uh, matter and relativistic state now the fifth point is and uh, sorry the fourth uh, the fourth verse reads these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the lord god made the earth and the heavens and the fifth verse reads and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the lord god had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground here god is claiming that this uh, land is watered by mist a mist cannot penetrate the land it is just a superficial watering of upper surface it cannot percolate inside the earth then how could it be possible to raise vegetation to raise deeper deep growing plants the plant which needs more water how could it be possible and this is also beyond the state of acceptance that uh, mist is created or watering
in the dry regions of this earth and in many places no mist is formed these mists are formed only on upper regions of uh, earth where there is high altitude in the mountaineering region and in the cold region and not in the hot region dry regions but here it is said that whole earth is mystified so this is against the geographical scientific uh, events and chronology the seventh verse reads and the lord god formed man a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man become a living soul the eighth verse reads and the lord god planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed and the ninth verse reads and out of the ground made the lord god to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil here it is very funny and interesting <laughs> that uh, and contradictory also contradictory in relation to bible itself and leave apart the scientific veracity of this uh, statement here god is saying that man is created out of the dust of the ground previously it was said that uh, man was created in the form of god itself so do we accept do we recognize that god is also created from the dust of the ground if uh, this man is created from the dust and if it is equivalent to the forms of god then it means that this uh, dust of the ground is capable of forming a shape of god itself then god is also made up of dust we have to accept that if god is omnipotent omniscient if god is pure if god is sinless if god is enlightened one and if man is man is in the form of god itself then this man must possess the qualities of the god 
why it did not possess those qualities or if god is of the same form of the man then why we would not say that god also possesses all those types of uh, misattributes sinful attributes all those types of secondaries and all the deceitful actions of the man and all the bad qualities of man so all those bad qualities of man must be possessed in the god if it is in the form of man itself here it is said that man is created out of the dust this is a very funny thing and this is against the evolutionary concept this is against the scientific fact and it is also said here that he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life the writer of this novel bible i am saying it a novel because it is so funny this is imaginary this is not a work of god the writer does not know that we breathe not only from the nostril but also from our skin if uh, our whole body is painted even if we breathe from the nostril we would die after some time after some hours he would die so this fact is not uh, known to the writer of the bible here it is also said that god breathed into his nostril the breath of life it means god is breathing and for the life god is also dependent on the breath also dependent on oxygen also dependent on this air if it is in the form of human if it is in the form of man which is claiming in the bible but previously air was not present so how this god survived if it is in the form of human as it is claiming itself then how sorry not itself but uh, self i should say because here this god is expressing as um in the masculine gender form this god is also breathing so breathing like human then how this god survived without oxygen and oxygen was not created this god itself is saying that previously it was nothing so there was no air then how it 
how this God breathed. So breath into the nostril, the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Before breathing, man was not a living soul. Means soul is dependent on breath. Means soul is dependent on oxygen. What nonsense this Bible is teaching. This Bible is teaching that soul is dependent on oxygen. Soul is dependent on air. The eighth verse reads that uh, God had planted garden eastward in Eden. This Eden is called heaven and then God had planted this garden so this uh, Eden is also a type of a forest a type of garden Means it is also a reflection of today's earth. There he put the man whom he had formed. Why he had put the man in the garden? Did he not know that? Uh, I have to transfer this man to the earth later on. Then how could he say, how could it be said that uh, he was omniscient? And out of the, and he had created just a single man. This is a point to be noted. He put the man. Here it is used as a singular person. Means previously only one man was created. This is also against the law of evolution. This is also against the concept of the evolution. Against the concept of the evolution. From a single man, all humans are formed. If from a single man, all human forms are formed, then Darwin is saying that man is evolved from primates. How could it be possible now? This is why biblical clergymen were against the scientists. They have punished many scientists. They have put these scientists into the jail and also they killed them. This is one of the reasons. From a single man, you have created this whole humankind. This is also against the law of evolution. And out of the garden made the Lord God to 
grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil <coughs> means there is tree for the food there is tree for the knowledge means knowledge is coming from the tree this is so funny that knowledge is coming from the tree food is coming from the tree is coming from the tree it is okay but uh, here it is said that he has created every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food it means those trees which are not producing food for the consumption of man they were not present in the eden how they are originated they how they originated in this earth this is to be explained from his thing those trees were created out god has not mentioned here if there was no seed from which thing that was created here it is said that knowledge is coming from the tree see the source of knowledge from the bible if tree the source of knowledge that means human mind is not capable of generating knowledge this tree is capable of generating knowledge how from tree knowledge gets transferred to human mind this is just a fable this is just a story which is made for people of childish nature of childish quality of childish status today we have discussed nine verses of chapter 2 of genesis of old testament if uh, you want to comment you should comment and i will answer it by saying om hari i am taking a leave from you namaskaram